Hello everyone, Texty21 here. Welcome to the ninth video in this huge video manual that we now call the feature reviews of the Samsung GenoSlide slash Corby Pro slash Brooklyn. Been a while since I've done these. Uh, basically, believe it or not, there are more things to show. In this video, we have the return of the smiley as the wallpaper. That's it. No, I'm joking. In this video, I'm going to take you through the Bluetooth because I haven't actually covered that yet. Also, uh, recalibration. So if maybe you're touching here, but it thinks you're touching way over here, you may need to recalibrate your screen. Thank you to two uh, YouTube users, these two in particular. Basically, they have enlightened me of the fact that Poweringo has got a new version out, so I'm going to show you through that. And Poweringo is the instant messenger, which I showed in video number eight. And all the way back in video number one, I showed you about the menu about how you can move the icons around and so on and you've got three menu pages it turns out you can get a lot more okay, I've managed to get up to nine menu pages however in theory you can get up to 31 menu pages haven't tried this yet because I got a bit bored with it but I'll show you how to get more menu pages for your money if that makes any sense and you've all been asking me to do it for years and years and years the GPS Believe it or not, I'm finally going to do the GPS. The only thing I will warn you is it does use the internet. So I'm connected to Wi-Fi at all times in this case, so make sure you are connected if you're going to try this yourself. And I'm afraid to say, not to put a down tone on it, but um, if you are you know, really going for the GPS features, then I'm afraid, be prepared to be disappointed. Yeah, sorry about that. Anyway, let's begin. Now, this phone does have GPS, and it does actually work, although it only is really used in Google Maps. This is a pre-installed application on the phone. You'll find Google Maps under Google. Now, one thing I'll just mention, my menu, I've reset it to the default um, icon locations in preparation for later on in the video. If you remember, Google was on my first page. But there it is now on the second. Google. There it is, Google Maps. Well, because if you are going to use it, make sure you are connected to the internet, because even though GPS itself doesn't need the internet, I'm afraid this does, to download all the maps and to get you directions and so on. So there we go, so there we go. Now, the GPS is now being used to find my location within 900 metres. As it says, I went for GPS. It's ever so slightly adjusting itself. I can tell you that's actually currently on my school. But seeing as my school is a five-minute walk away, it's not too bad. I can tell you... I'm not going to point it out for obvious reasons, but I am within that circle. As you can see, it's a f it's fairly accurate. End of the day, Google Maps itself is an amazing application. It's really, really good. I mean, the maps are clear. You can zoom in, you can zoom out, of course, um, and it's just you know just like Google Earth or Google Maps on your computer. It's actually really good. But the problem, it needs internet access. So if I'm out and about, I can't really use this because I rely on Wi-Fi. As you can see, really on here, you can show traffic, although that only really works on motorways. A map view, so if you don't want it as photos, you can just have it as a plain map. And, I mean, that's really about it. The only other thing you can do, however, on this, is just like... There we go, that's on Kingston Road. Uh, just like um, when on your computer. There we go. If you click on a road, you can have street view. There we go. Let's have a look into that. I'll expand. There we go. So this is where it's actually wonderful. I mean, look at that. On a screen like this as well, it's beautifully coloured, and that is brilliant. Okay, so you get the idea, basically. So the Google Maps on this phone is fantastic, but the GPS function itself isn't really needed. So just a quick tour of that, I'll just tell you that G you know, Google Maps is amazing. But going back to the GPS, the only other place you can use the GPS is in the phone settings. Go to phone settings, scroll all the way down to the bottom, GPS settings, and here we are. So here in the GPS settings, as you can see, we've got GPS position and GPS plus settings. In the settings, to actually get your thing working, you can download data. You can check how long this data is valid for. You can choose to auto-download it if you so wish. 
Your profile is basically which internet connection it will use, and a disclaimer, basically it's a long thing about how it will send data and stuff, and it says quite clearly at the end, if you do not consent to any use of the data transmitted, blah blah blah, please do not use this service, and so on. Basically, it's not really worth it, but um, this GPS position is supposed to tell you your latitude, your longitude, and your altitude, and how many satellites there are you know, locked to the device. As you can see, they all say zero. Now, Samsung themselves, I emailed them, and they said that you got to wait a while for it to connect and be in a, you know, a good, clear area. I stood at the back of my garden for an hour whilst doing other things, and with this turned on, nothing. So it's sort of, um, <laughs> it's hard to explain. It's a kind of a case of, it might work for some, but for most others, it won't. So if you are looking at this phone for the GPS, you know, don't kid yourselves, I'm afraid. It's not as great as it seems. Although, if, I mean, to give it any credit, the Google Maps application is fantastic. Although, you do need the internet access. Next up, Bluetooth. Now, Bluetooth is situated in the menu, as you know. And it basically works exactly the same as Wi-Fi. You tap to turn it on and then you can search to find devices and that's to pair them up. If you want to send a file, you need to go to the file you want to send and then send it through there. As you can see here, it's slightly different. In terms of, of course, on Bluetooth, you have pairings. So here I'm paired to two phones. But basically, for example, say you wanted to delete a pairing, because with pairings, unfortunately, you can't actually access each other's phones if they're both on and allowed. If you want to delete a pairing, you'd think, well, you'd click on the pairing and then you'd go delete. But, um, hang on. There's no delete option, what do I do? There's actually another option, if you scroll. The scroll bar, if you look on over here, the scroll bar, the grey one on the right, only comes up when you're scrolling. So, unless you actually accidentally knock it or know what you're doing, the word delete doesn't actually show up unless you scroll. And there you go, so you can delete selected, multiple and all and so on. So if I want to delete this one, simple as that. So basically that's what I just want to show you in that one, except for that it's fairly self-explanatory and I don't really need to say any more. Now if the phone starts to misbehave and maybe you're touching the screen on the right but it's coming up on the left and so on and so forth, you know, you might want to recalibrate the screen. So basically it's not all over when it starts to go wrong. If you want to recalibrate the screen, firstly, I suggest you have something pointy, like this plastic stylus which I've had for years. Um, you don't need a stylus, it's basically something with a point, because you need to be accurate with this, and a finger won't really do the job, that's what she said. Um, so ideally you want a pen, or maybe the edge of a credit card, or whatever you want. So to recalibrate your phone, follow these steps. Go to Menu, Settings, Phone Settings. Calibration. There you go. You've probably seen something like this before, maybe on interactive whiteboards at school or college. But all you've got to do is basically you've got to tap the very center of these targets, like that, and it's done. And then you can ask to save the setting or not. So as mine's working fine, I'll say no. And the option's also there to retry, so maybe if you mess up, like that. And you can also restore the factory default to see if that works first. But basically, so if the screen starts acting a bit funny, the option is there to recalibrate it. Now, special thanks to Ruler D. Walshy, I'm sorry if I pronounced that wrong, for um, let me know on video number eight that Palringo have released a new version of their instant messenger application on the phone. Everything works basically the same, but I thought I'll just show you, seeing as I did a sort of tutorial in video number 8, and now that technically doesn't work. Um, but yeah, so basically carrying on for video number 8, um, for Palringo, to download the latest version, you still go to palringo.mobi, and you make sure it says the Samsung B5310, download it, exactly the same, it will download it, and it will become your instant messenger. And it really is kind of the same as before, just the interface is different, and I think it's a lot better. Everything's a lot bigger, but there you go. So you've got your login, you've got register, if you haven't got a Power Ringo account, or help. 
and it's basically exactly the same as before. You enter in your details, click sign in, it will ask you to connect to the internet, and there we go. So you can see on the front page you've only got Poweringo, any services you may have added, and location. As you can see, this is now more like the Twitter application, which I also showed in video number 8. You've got Poweringo, you've got messages, which is basically your chats, so instant messages. You've got people that are online, and I'm not actually sure what that is, because it's blank. Um, it's the same as before, really. To add a new service, menu, add service find your service, for example MSN, enter in your details, click OK, simple. And finally, this is thanks to another YouTube user, um, I have no idea how to pronounce that, I apologise, <laughs> players, thank you so much. They read somewhere that you can get five menu pages, now I can tell you that looks like a typo because you can't really get five menu pages. You can make it five if you so wish, but the default is three. As it turns out, you can actually get, in theory, up to 31 menu pages. The most I've got is nine before becoming bored. But basically, if you've tried this already, if you've moved around the icons by clicking the icon up there, as you can see, it adds another page. Now, I thought this was here like a temporary thing, like, you know, you can move things onto here and then move them off again. It's like a holding area, as you were. But no, if you were to leave an icon on there, say Sim Applications, if you were to leave it on there and click Save, you've now got four menu pages. One, two, three, four. Do you see where this is going? Now you've put that again, you've got a fifth menu page. So let's move the stopwatch save. You've now got five menu pages. One, two, three, four, five. Do you see where I'm going with this? Basically, by doing that, you can get as many menu pages as you so wish. And seeing as each menu page has its own unique title, if you decide to change it, you can do this to utilize the first. So say, maybe on the first page, you may want all your, you know, your system applications like logs, settings, my files, and so on. Now on the next page, you may want internet, like Wi-Fi, Facebook, um, Google, and so on. And then you may want useful things like the calculator, converter, stopwatch, your memos, and so on, and so on, and so on. So basically, even though you cannot add anything to this, you can move them all around and get many more pages. So thank you very much for watching once again. I um, hope you're enjoying these videos, hope you like them. Um, thank you to all my new subscribers, hope you enjoy your stay. Um, in the ways of general updates, I will just kind of put it out there now that I'm not saying that this is the best phone in the world. The main reason I do these videos is for the sake of people that have this phone or want this phone that want to find out more. Um, because really, this is not a smartphone. It is a mobile phone, or cell phone to keep it international. It's just that there's much more than meets the eye. So that's why I do these videos. And also people seem to enjoy them. I like making them when I actually get the time. So you know what, let's keep going. Comments and questions down below. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Who knows, there may be a 10th video. No? Um, if you want to watch my last eight videos done all sped up into four minutes, click here. And if you want to see the playlist for the rest of the videos, click here. Uh, another update, if you've seen my welcome to my channel video, you know, it says a new space on there for Quiz 2.1. Um, honestly, I kind of forgot all about it, <laughs> to be honest. And I am going back to working on that now that my college exams are over for now. So, yeah, basically, I just hope you really enjoy it when it's finished. But basically, it's an interactive quiz with a difference in the sense of it, I've tried to make it interesting and fun, and it ranges from anything to everything, is what I can say. And I'll be narrating it, so I'll be there mocking you every step of the way. I mean, helping you every step of the way. Thank you for listening, and I'll see you again soon. Have a good day, and good week, and just a great month. Actually, there's only three days left of the month. Just, just have a good time, yeah. See you again soon. Goodbye.